Hello and welcome. This time we're going to talk about a different method eh, of communication, again a serial bus interface. So we're talking about I2C, I squared C, yeah. Written, I write it right down, yeah. It's written like this I2C, I squared C, yeah. This basically means inter integrated circuit, yeah. So it's inter integrated circuit. This is a serial bus system. Okay, so it's a serial bus system. It was developed by Philips Semiconductors, which now belongs also, this part of Philips now belongs also to NXP Semiconductors, like the last one. It was developed in 1982 yeah, for television sets. Yeah. They wanted to have a cheaper method on how to connect television sets, the, the, the simple ICs, integrated circuit, and how to connect them. Because, you know, it's not that cheap place on a, on a board is not that cheap and if you can connect it on a serial basis uh, then it might be better okay cheaper overall not that fast like we talked serial buses are not that fast like parallel buses but it might be it might be better uh, for systems which do not need to be that fast okay so how is this uh, system now working there's also a master and also a slave. Yeah? So there is the master. Yeah? And there are several slaves. And as I said, the main thing of serial interfaces are that they share one communication media and this communication media is now two lines only two lines okay one of these lines is called SCL yeah that's the clock line yeah dirigent yeah? and then there's the data line SDA okay they are all connected to all communication partners. Okay, so this here is the is the microcontroller. Or what? This is a master, yeah? and this is the periphery. Yeah. Peripheral. The slaves. The master is controlling the network. Yeah? One thing is there, we need to have some pull-up pull up resistors. And those pull-up resistors, they pull the lines, both lines, up to a supply voltage. Yeah? Pull up to a supply voltage. Uh, logical high means we have at least 0.70%, 70 so high. With it Carl so to right, I write this. Yeah, high. 70% of 4DD is at the line. Yeah, and low. This low. It must be below 30%. Yeah. Smaller than 30, and of course, bigger than 70. Yeah. So, a high voltage, voltage on the lines means logically one. Okay. How is this communication not working? The communication always, always starts with uh, the address. Yeah. Each element has one address and an address consists of seven bits that's the first byte set or send of the master is always the address yeah? so and the address 
the address byte, of course, and byte is 8 bits. Yeah? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah? 8 bits. And the address of each element is only 7 bits. And the last byte yeah, sent by the master, this tells the slave if I want to get some information from it or write some information to it. Okay? So it is the read-write byte. Later it was uh, because then we have seven bits. Yeah? This is the address. And this is the read-write byte. Bit. Bit, of course. Bit, bit, bit. The read-write bit. Yeah? Two raised by the power of seven would be 128. So we would assume that we can address 128 different uh, uh, slaves. Yeah? However, 16 of those combinations, they are meant for special purposes. Okay, so we can only address 112 different ICs. Yeah? And of course, uh, you know, there's a family of ICs, uh, usually only three bits are uh, selectable and the other, the other four bits are given by the manufacturer. And this means we only can have uh, two, four, eight, eight different ICs uh, of one type. Yeah. Because of this, later it was switched from, from uh, 7 bits to 10 bit addressing. Okay, which would is allowing now 1,136 nodes. It's compatible. That is how I squared C communication is working. Yeah, and we can use I squared C communication on our Arduino. Yeah? The Arduino library, which we are using for this yeah? library. Is called wire. Yeah. Wire.h. This is the library. Yeah. Here's the arena. Here are SDA and SCL pins. Yeah. We have not talked about them either. Yeah? We can use them simply. Yeah? And we do have even a device inside which will use this uh, I squared C interface. This is this one. Yeah? You see, here it's written SDA and SCL, VCC. Yeah? This is exactly those exactly those things, and this thing already has this pull resistors built in, so we do not have to care about this. This is good. This we are going to use. What is this thing? This is a so-called real-time clock. So, in our Arduino, you notice we do have uh, information about how many milliseconds this was already running. But we don't know it's Monday, Tuesday, whatever. Yeah, we don't know time of day and so on. This little thing here, yeah, this can manage this. Okay, with this little thing, it's battery buffered. Yeah, we can ask it how late is it. Yeah, we can set the date. Yeah, and this is even as alarms and so on. Yeah, we will make. An experiment now with this. Yeah? Read information, yeah? the time out of this by using I squared C. Yeah? So let's start with the hardware. So actually, these are all things we need yeah? Arduino, real time clock, four cables. We're using these cables with this that we can probably plug it in. And I will use red for VCC. I will use brown for ground. 
Well, that blackguard hands. And orange will be data and yellow will be clock. Okay, that's it. Red is 5 volts. Brown is ground. Okay, looks good. And now uh, the data needs to go to, I have to look, data, uh -huh, to here. Yeah. Ah, it's even written here. Look, data, clock. Uh -huh. On this version of Arduino it's written. Some other versions out there, it's not labeled. Uh -huh. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you know, but if it's labeled, it's nice. So, we are connected. Hardware ready. Yeah? That's it. Let's come to the software. So, to the software, we said, yeah, we are using the library wire.h. Yeah? Do we know something about this library? No. Yeah? Well, luckily for us, there is uh, always something like... Uh, uh, examples. Examples for each library there are examples. So we're opening here under the file menu yeah, examples and there are wire and I will open the I2C scanner. Yeah? I squared C, C scanner. This is how this is, looks like. So it's a ready to use program which shows us how those things are working. We see we are including wire. Okay. We could have guessed that. Yeah? And then they are using wire.begin. Aha, uh -huh. this is already something new. It looks like we're beginning, it's just a serial begin, but without this, this baud rate. Okay, so wire begin. Then here there are two things wire begin transmission, wire end transmission. Yeah? By the way, this is how uh, I2C communication is started and stopped. Yeah? What this thing here is actually doing. Yeah? It will try all possible addresses here yeah? and it will call begin transmission for that address and then end transmission. If something went wrong during this transmission, there is no transmission at all, but there is handshake and so on, yeah? so then there will be an error message in return. Okay? If we have this error message, we know uh -huh, this address there's nobody answering at this address, so this address is not there. Yeah? If we do not have an address, then we know ooh, somebody answered on our, uh, on our bus system, so our communication is okay. okay. We'll plug in the Arduino now here. Bim, bim. Blinking, nothing's going up in smoke. That's good. Yeah. So let's upload, let's upload this file and, okay, uploading, that's it. Let's have a look on the serial monitor. Indeed, indeed, there is uh, information. Yeah? So there is, there is something, but is this really my real time clock? I will simply Unplug the real time clock. No devices found. And re plug it to be sure. Let's see if it's found again. Yes! Yes! So, uh, the only thing we need to do now we know the bus is working. Yeah? And now we can send patterns of bits to the real time clock, which patterns I don't know. Yeah, and I want to get the, the clock, yeah, the hour, the second, the whatever. I need to send different patterns and uh, different patterns coming return. So I just have to find out those patterns and it will work for me. Yeah. Sounds easy, right? Of course not. Of course this is not easy. Yeah. This is why there is a, a library for this. 
there is a library for our real time clock. Okay. So we're going to, to look for that library. I will close this one, I will close this one. Here, tools, manage library. We're going to install this library. Okay, going to install the library. Here we are. The real time clock is called DS3231. So I will type in here DS3231. Thirty-two, thirty-one. I said. Here it is. I here have it already installed. Okay, but you have to install this library. Okay, close. And now we can start to program. Yeah. Of course, we also get examples. Yeah. Examples. Now, come on, huh? come on, tut, tut, tut. Where the tears? here are examples. You can use them afterwards on your training. Yeah? I will show you some basic things. Okay, so first save it under a decent name. We are 40, okay, 3A. It's 41. I to see, or I call it real time clock. Real time clock. Book. Okay. What do we include? Of course, we include the wire. Huh? And then, of course, we include. We include uh, this DS3231.h as well. I only have to write it correct. Okay. So, inside this uh, library, there is an object defined. We had already an object, so I will now generate this object. It's like a variable for us. Yeah. And this is the object clock. This is my real time clock. Yeah. And via this object, I'm communicating with this clock. Okay. So we learned we need to use wire begin. And of course, we will use serial port again to print something out for us. Okay. That's basically it, what we need to do in the loop. I will first print something. I will print now. And now I want to write the date and the time. Okay. So first I want to get the date. And this is easy. Clock dot get date. This is the function to get the date. Okay. And I will immediately I will immediately print this uh, as decimal number, not hex. Okay. Our our print line now at dot. So we should get the current date. And we will delay one second that we're not filling up. So this should already I was this. Uh huh. Look at this. Control D, always a good idea. Upload. So, uploaded. Let's have a look on the serial monitor. 13th. I guess Friday the 13th. <laughs> Okay, 13th. Good. Yeah. So get date already worked for us. Mm -hmm. Now, after the day, we want to have the month. So, 
we think we're just writing get month. It's going to be orange. Looks good. Yeah. Upload. Oh yeah, it's not working. This is because this gate month needs to have a century. Yeah. It needs to know if we are in 20 or 21 something. Okay. Currently, currently we are at 20 zero. So century should be false. Okay. And I need to have this over here. Yeah. Ah, so. Ah, uh -huh. of course, Printlum. Let's make it that way. How does it look like now? 30th, 1311. Okay, 30th of November. Good, good, good. This worked. So we're putting out now the day or the, the year. Yeah? The year is always 20. Yeah? Zero. So I can even write it here. Dark 20. Yeah? And now if century is one, Century is true. Yeah. We'll write one yeah. because then we are twenty-one something. Yeah. Else, we'll write zero. And now we write the year in two-digit format. Well, again, copy this, copy and paste, copy and paste. Yeah, this we don't have. Huh? Let's see what is the result. Mm -hmm. 2020. Also looks good. Now you know when I produce this video. Up to now it was a secret and now it is been relieved. Revealed, relieved, revealed, of course. Okay, now we want to get the, the time. Okay. I will simply make it now very quick. Yeah? So there's a get hour, yeah? then there is a get minute, and then there is a get second. Of course, I need to print there something. In between, we have to print a space yeah, or a right time. Mm. Here, we write column, other column, and then there are some things at the get hour. Yeah. There are two pool variables. Yeah. 12 hour uh, and p.m. If we want to have it, ah, so this is not working. Ooh, I made a mistake. H12, I must, variable names always start with letters, never with numbers. Okay. So, and p.m. What they are good for, we will see afterwards. Uh, let's try this. Looks good. Print line I should have written, but up to now, looks good. Now to these two values. H12, if this is false, we have 20 hour, for, hour format. Uh, 
Uh, so from 0 to 23 hours. If it is true, uh, we do have 12 hour format. Uh, so from 0 to 12 and then from 1 to 12. And we have to write somehow if it's PM or AM. Uh, so this is what I'm going to do now. If H12, so this means we have a 12 hour 12 hour setting. If we if we have 24 hour signal, I will just write 24 hours. That's it. And if I have a 12 hour signal, if PM, so if we have PM, I will write zero dot print line. Here. Else, it's AM. Try it. Try it. Uploading. Twenty four hours. Okay. 15.30, half past four, ah, three. <laughs> I'm ahead of my time, always. Okay. So this is, this is how this is working. Okay. We're getting information. Okay. And your task now is, your task now is that you are uh, going to uh, I mean, probably the, the time is wrong right now for you yeah? because, you know, the, the battery was empty and so on. Yeah, it's not that easy. Yeah? And we need to set it somehow. There are examples. Yeah? There are examples. You can use those examples. Yeah? See if you can make somehow, incorporate somehow a setting in this program yeah? as a training. So this is I squared C. Next time we are going to talk about yet another serial bus system. This is called one wire bus. What is behind this one wire bus and why it's called one wire? We'll hear next time. For this video, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.